Hey, it's Mars, and this is my footstep system. So what do we need to do first? Let's start by adding my footstep script to my player. I have two scripts to choose from, an animation event driven script and a curves driven script. We'll start by using the animation event. So I'll drag my footstep master events to my player. and we need to choose our left foot and right foot so you're going to go into your model and we need to get into the hips or bip or mesh or rig wherever your bones are located so for me that's the hips and I'll go down till I get his left foot and his right foot now we need to add sounds to these arrays I'll click this padlock at the top so that the inspector locks. That way I can navigate away from my player and keep the inspector open. And I'll add a few sounds here to each of the arrays. Alright, now we need to tag our game objects appropriately. So my terrain needs to be on the terrain tag. And then any game object that you'll be walking on that's not a terrain needs to be tagged with the appropriate surface. In this case, this bridge I'll be walking on needs to be tagged as... Actually, let me unlock my inspector here. So my terrain... I just tag my wizard as terrain. Let's go back to player. My terrain needs to be tagged as terrain. And my bridge here needs to be tagged as surface stone. Now we need a way to trigger uh, the sound effect itself. So what we're doing here is we're ray casting out of the player's feet. That's from uh, when I drug in those bones for the player's feet. We're sending a raycast to the ground, and whatever it hits, it stores that game object in the script. And then it searches the game object's tag. So if I walk on, the, walk on this bridge here, it'll see that the game object's tag is surface stone, and it will play a random sound from the stone array. Very straightforward. However, if it hits the ground and the tag is terrain, It'll search through the terrain data's splat map. In this case, I have eight different textures on my terrain. So if I walk on this dirt texture here, it will see that I'm standing on dirt, um, and it will search the file name in your project folder. In this case, the file name is my terrain underscore dirt. So it will see that the word dirt is in the file name, and once again, it'll play a random sound from, the, from its corresponding array. So now that we have our player's script set up and the tags set up, now we just have to trigger the sound. And like I said, we can use curves or animation events. So we'll start with animation events. In my animator, I have my running animation. And in your inspector, on the import settings, we've got mask, curves, and events. So I'll open up events. And we need to add two keyframes here one for each foot touching the ground. So I'll scrub through here until my left foot touches the ground and I'll add a keyframe for footstep left and I'll keep scrubbing until the right foot touches the ground add a new event footstep right and apply. And that's pretty much it. When the animation plays, it will send a message to all of the scripts on my player game object for a footstep left event or a method or function. So, since we have the footstep master events script, uh, I'll flip to it right now. 
here we've got a function or method footstep left and footstep right and like I said it's raycasting to the ground to find the game object then it's checking the texture if the tag is one of the surfaces we have here it'll play the sound if the tag is terrain it'll search the terrain's uh, file name and then it will play that corresponding sound very simple so let's give it a try and see if it works here I'm walking on dirt grass this is a surface stone game object back to the terrain here's a default sound leaves here's a metal sound snow stone wood dirt grass and water so we have a problem now let's say you're not just using a single animation but instead of blend tree we'll check out my other player I have a blend tree here and it's pretty nice I've got a walk forward walk left walk backwards and walk right as well as a run forward run left run back and run right so the animations transition smoothly everything looks great but there's one big problem if I'm walking back and to the left, you'll see that these four uh, squares or diamonds have a blue circle around them. And that means that all of the animation events are going to be flattened and they'll play at the same time. So if I'm walking back and to the right, I'm going to hear four footsteps every time one of my feet touches the ground. So to get around this, I decided to use curves instead of animation events. So let's set that up now. I'll choose a one of my eight animations here and we will go to the model it's in and just like before where we went to the import settings and changed the events instead we're going to change the curves and I'll need two curves here one for footstep left and one for footstep right and we need it starts with two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end. I'll also want one in the middle for each. So I'll scrub to the middle and then add the keyframe to each. All right, now we've got three keyframes. That's good. I'll use this left arrow here to get to the first keyframe. And I'll set the value here to negative one. We'll go to the next keyframe. And that will be a positive one. And the last keyframe will be a negative one again. I'll do the same for the bottom curve here. Negative one, positive one, negative one. Now my script is going to update these. Um, actually, these, as the um, animation plays, these values change themselves automatically. But I want to tie these values to my animator controller so I'll add two floats here I'll add the footstep left and the footstep right so let's go back to my player here and we're almost done we need to tweak this a little bit more so just like I did before we're going to scrub through the animation until my left foot touches the ground and this moment exactly, I'm, I'm looking at the top curve here, footstep left, where this red line is running through. That's where I want the green to pass through. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to click and then hold control so it snaps into place. And right about here. So the goal is, before the foot touches the ground, this this value here is less than zero but after it touches the ground 
it's greater than zero. I'll do the same with the right foot now. I want this green line to cross the center exactly when the right foot touches the ground. Right about here. So now in my script, when I'm looking at this value, which I can reference through my animator controller, I will simply check, let's look at the left foot here on the top curve, if in the last frame our float was less than zero, but in this frame it's greater than zero, we'll play our sound effect. And then for the right foot, if in the last frame this value was greater than zero, but in this frame it's less than zero, we'll play the sound. So by using curves this way, we can ensure that none of these eight sounds overlap or flatten on top of each other. They'll always have a very slightly different um, point in which they cross over zero, which is perfect. That way um, everything works the way it's supposed to. So, let's go to the script just so I can show you. Here it is right here. So we're we have a variable called current frame footstep left and we're getting the float from our footstep left float in our animator controller which is pulling from the curve and we're checking to see if it's greater than zero now but last frame just a millisecond ago it was less than zero so that gives us that very specific moment in time where we want to raycast hit the floor and then check the texture which once again is if it's one of these tags it'll play the sound if it's a terrain it'll search the file name and then play that corresponding sound so you'll have to do that for each of your animations if you have a big blend tree it takes a little while but it's really worth it let's see if that character is working as well I'll go ahead and add instead of um, the animation event version of my script I'll drag on footstep master curves and once again we need our left and right feet so we'll browse through our character I'll lock the inspector as well left foot right foot. I'll drag in some of my sounds. and let's see if it works so now we've got a very complex blend tree and sure enough one sound for when the foot touches the ground So there's a few other things I want to share uh, before I end this video. I also implemented a volume variance. So we have our main volume here. I'm keeping it low because this is on YouTube. But you would adjust the volume however you like and you can add a slight bit of variance and a slight bit of pitch variance. That way, even if you only have one MP3 for a footstep, by randomizing here, let's say we randomize 
the volume by 0 0.02 or give it a variance of 0 0.02. So it's either going to be negative 0 0.02 or positive 0 0.02, louder or quieter, completely random. So that works for the pitch and the volume. That helps to make your sounds a bit different. And I've also included support for using a little particle system on your feet. So for the dirt and snow, it's placed at your character's feet. And for the water, it raycasts from above your foot that you just stepped on the ground with. And then when it hits the surface of the water, that's where the particle system will be placed, not at the feet. And you have two options here, instantiated effects and toggled effects. Instantiated is just as it sounds. It'll be placed in the scene at that current vector 3, and it'll stay there forever uh, unless you have a script on it that says delete after two seconds or however long. The toggled effects instead will be a... Let's add one to my player now, actually. So I here I have a dirt, snow, and water effects. I'll put this inside of my player game object, and then from my player game object I'll drag into these slots here. And let's try toggled, and we'll see how it looks. So this toggled um, particle system, I'll unmaximize here, we can see that it always stays within our player character. Here's the snow effects game object prefab or um, particle system, and it simply remains in the scene, in the player. However, it's disabled every time a foot touches the ground. This might be useful if either A, um, you don't want to instantiate game objects and fill up your hierarchy with, with prefabs, or if you're maybe exporting to a slower device, you wouldn't want to continue instantiating game objects. This is just one thing that gets turned on and off. The only drawback here is that the particle system has to be about one second or less in length because as soon as your next foot touches the ground it gets turned off and placed at the new location. Here I'll change it from toggled to instantiated and we'll get a, a, a new particle system each time a foot touches the ground and the other one remains in the scene. Like I said you would want a script on it so that it deletes itself. So that's about it. A download link for these two scripts is in a link in the description. Uh, thanks for watching.